Hello, welcome to Velvet Remedies at the Twisted Teapot in Boscombe. My name is Hartley Wolf. I will be here every month interviewing the headline performer of each night, uh, so be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Tonight, Velvet Remedies is running as part of the Bournemouth Arts by the Sea Festival, um, and with me is Legski, creator of uh, Verbal Remedies and a very good friend of mine. Hello, sir. Yeah. Legski, everybody. Yeah. So, what, what is Verbal Remedies for you then? I mean, what, what does it mean? for you to have this to have, no, pff, This is a dream. Um, I never anticipated it happening. Uh, I'm still trying to get my head around it. I think I'm always going to be trying to get my head around it. Um, now it's, it's the future for me, hopefully, potentially. With, uh, we're trying to buy the Geodome uh, so we can tour festivals with the Verbal Remedies Poem Dome. Uh, trying to get workshops running in schools as Verbal Remedies Juniors. Um, and just creating the network. So we're here in Bournemouth, uh, Brighton, we are getting a new venue, should hopefully be back there in November. Uh, Bristol, we return to the Arts House on the 22nd of October. And we have our debut in Leeds on the 12th of November. It's very difficult to advertise poetry to younger people, is what I've discovered. When I was taken to a poetry night originally, I really struggled with the idea of going to a poetry night. I was expecting to see a, a divorced, bitter, middle-aged lady who owned 27 cats sing a poem about daffodils. Uh, lo and behold, it wasn't that. Uh, it was really good. So do you feel like the term poetry is a bit of a put-off? Do you feel like maybe it's not quite, it, it's an out of fashion or redundant? I don't think it's redundant. I think uh, as an introduction term, it's very difficult because people, I was very prejudiced towards poetry because of school. I had no passion or anything for it in school. Uh, but I had poetry as a singular thing. I didn't realise how vast a term it could really be. How would you define yourself as a poet? I mean, what, what kind of poet uh, are you? Different things inspire me. Um, I started writing through traumatic events, essentially, and bereavement. Um, but then I've been inspired by Jars of Marmite since then. So I think now my foot in, is in the door. Uh, anything and everything that makes me happy can be inspiring. So do you, has poetry helped you in a way? Like, Poetry's changed Why me. Why do you write? It's changed you. Poetry's changed me completely. I'm, I'm not who I was three years ago. Uh, not even remotely. Um, and I love it. I love who I am now. I liked who I was back then, but right now I'm having a real good time. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your, one thing I wanted to ask was um, a lot of your poems are quite funny. Thank you. Is comedy important to you? To a degree. I've never set out to write a poem. I've always been inspired by something and got myself two or three lines and then it's just grown around that and I often don't know what I'm writing about until it's finished. Apart from like tea, hay fever and marmite, which are a clear target for them. I try to be, in my mind, I'd like to be a funny, energetic, chatty person outside of poetry. I think I try to convey myself on stage as much as I am really as a person. My dad once told me, that he only had kids so that they could put the kettle on. And we never had a metal one, it was a crappy plastic yellow one. And that's just the way we're functioning kettles. Once the water got hot, the bubbles were popped. And speed over the top, he used to drop quite a lot into the kitchen side. But as I filled up that mug, I got filled up with pride. And so I'd slide across the line. Oh, it's a big part of my life, bro. The thought of tea just makes my mind blow. Plus the light in the kettle emits a nice glow. I'd describe a cuppa as a hug and a mug with two sugars sent by a being that's above us. Tea would endlessly love us like a hot beverage mother. When my brain's annihilated, after I've got inebriated, my palate becomes salivated by the drink that's naturally caffeinated. I go as far as saying as I'm infatuated by this highly rated, uncomplicated, somewhat sophisticated beverage, and I hope that that's been clearly demonstrated. Let's rewind a couple of lines. I said that tea was uncomplicated. But some of the teas I've tasted, I don't know how those people made it, but it's left me a little more than frustrated, to the point where I've actually wasted the whole bloody thing. I mean, honestly. The methodology behind making tea properly is easier than putting your cock into a Johnny. My philosophy is two sugars followed by a tea bag. I prefer the pyramid bags by PG Tips. Their brews always make me lick my lips and while I'm waiting for the kettle switch to flick, I grab some chalky chip biscuits to dip and then place a packet on the table next to where I'm going to sit. Once the water reaches prime tea making temperature, we can continue on our journey as a tea making adventurer. Filling up the cup, leaving enough room for the white stuff, otherwise you're running the risk of making your beverage taste quite rough. Give it a stir. Give your tea bag a squeeze. And I truly believe you'll find your cup of tea tastes nothing short of sweet. Head into the lounge, kick back and relax. When it comes to the biscuits, 
Why not lunch the whole pack? I lack the discipline to contemplate any other thought than that, and my metabolism's ace, so it's not like I'll get fat. Sipping on the tea to acquire maximum refreshment, when it comes to tea's number one fan, I'm at the very least a contestant. But this moment is evanescent. My drink is disappearing. Peering down the cup, I can see more porcelain appearing, but in its taste I'm revering. My heart's commandeering. Nothing in the world's worth fearing when I'm sipping a cup of Darjeeling. And so I raise my mug. I raise my mug to the many blends, to the friends that I get to drink it with and the comfort it brings me on life's twists and bends. And now I'm ending this poem by letting you all know I'm putting on the kettle as soon as I get home. Thank you. Uh, while we're on the subject, do buy tea and cakes and sausage rolls here. They're all wonderful, man. Really, really tasty.